What had happened to Gerald was an F5. And the signs were quite evident. The countryside, gone. I think one of the most impressive uh, images that I saw occurred at one of the early houses where it was F5. Strength. In this particular case, you were looking at a, at a frisbee never to be found again. I asked the owner where it is. He said he could not find it. I went back a week later and asked again, did you ever find the to your a frisbee? Apparently it, it caught into the wind and flew off like a frisbee never to be found again. From there, I could then see how it was gaining in strength, such that by the time it reached Gerald, it was at its greatest strength, its greatest breadth on the ground, almost a half mile wide. And at that point, light objects were blown four to five in inches of a box of checks was later recovered at 18 inches. What had happened to Gerald was an, an F2. And the signs were quite evident. The countryside, the ground, was literally shaved. No grass, no trees, everything shaved to the uh, ground. The asphalt was sucked up, literally gone. The full extent of the damage could be seen from the air. Professor Don Green of Baylor University surveyed the trail of devastation left by the tornado in its wake. At the touchdown of the Gerald tornado, it ripped up the ground. We had a cotton field at the touchdown point in which the cotton plant was not only pulled out of the ground, the soil itself was removed down to a depth of about 18 inches. Miles. Next, it swept across a, a wheat field. All of those shafts were then plucked out of the ground, flying through the air by the millions, and then impaling these cows that were in the field beyond that. In terms of uh, the, the exposure to the wind itself, Often the uh, cattle lost their, their hair. They were skinned. Often what you would see is something like uh, meat in a butcher's shop. In some cases, what you saw was mostly skeleton. I think one of the most impressive uh, images that I saw occurred at one of the early houses where it was only at an F2 strength. In this particular case, you were looking at a, a storm shelter in which a monolithic concrete slab weighing well over at 18 inch ton, 18 in inches of concrete, was lifted off of the ground. I looked for the, the top of the storm shelter. I asked the owner where it is. He said he could not find it. I went back a week later and asked again, did you ever find the top to your storm shelter? Apparently it, it caught into the wind and flew off like a frisbee, never to be found again. From there, I could then see how it was gaining in strength, such that by the time it reached Gerald, it was at its greatest strength, its greatest breadth on the ground, almost a half mile wide. And at that point, everything was removed from the ground. Light objects were blown huge distances. A box of checks was later recovered 100 miles away. Other heavier objects, refrigerators, air conditioners, kitchen sinks were completely destroyed. They were lifted into the vortex of the tornado and reduced to shrapnel in the swirling column of debris. The effect of such force on a human body is best left to the imagination. Most of those who were killed had to be identified from their dental records.